What is going on guys, it's Bucky and welcome to another amazing chemistry tutorial and in this lesson we're going to be talking about ionic bonds. So what the heck is an ionic bond? An ionic bond is basically whenever you have two ions, a cation and an anion, and they have opposite charges, so remember the old rule, opposites attract, they're going to attract each other and form a bond. Pretty weird, huh? So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of when this would happen. This happens a lot whenever we're making salts, and we'll go ahead and talk about table salt. So table salt has two elements in it, sodium and chlorine. Now sodium, which is Na, how they came up with that is beyond me, but it has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, and this is actually important, I'm not, not just writing this down for fun, 2p6 and 3s1. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this. For valence electrons, remember, it's how many electrons are in the outermost energy level. It has one valence electron. Its outermost energy level is energy level three, and in that energy level, it has one valence electron. Now if we go ahead and take it, a look at another element, let me find a good color for chlorine. Now the symbol for chlorine is Cl and the electron configuration for this is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 and the third energy level is also the valence energy level for chlorine. But this one is 2s2, excuse me, 3s2 and 3p5. So let's go ahead and take a look at how many valence electrons are in chlorine. Well, the third energy level is the outermost energy level, and it has 2 plus 5, which is 7 valence electrons. Now remember, getting a full or completed valence energy level is the goal for all elements. That's what makes them stable, and that's what makes them happy. So if we take a look at sodium, we would get this. It would either need to gain 7 valence electrons, so it could fill that third energy level or it would need to lose this one and if it lost this electron right here the second energy level would then be its outermost energy level and it is already full and completed now for chlorine it would either need to gain one electron so the third energy level which is the valence energy level right now is filled up filled up and completed or it would need to lose these seven right here and that is kind of hard to do, lose a bunch or that many electrons. So what happens whenever you combine sodium and chlorine? You have this electron, it hops over to chlorine, so this electron is no longer here, and chlorine has one additional electron on the outermost energy level. So that's what reaction takes place. Oh, well, excuse me, I think I'm going to sneeze in like five seconds. So what happens again is sodium loses one electron and it becomes a positively charged ion and remember we call positively charged ions cations and we're going to go ahead and write it just like this Na with a plus is a superscript now what happens to chlorine is since it gains that electron it now has more electrons than protons and it becomes a positively charged ion or excuse me a negatively charged ion and we call negatively charged ions anions. Remember that N for negative, just like that. So after the transfer of electrons, chlorine is now negatively charged and sodium is now positively charged. So since this is a positively charged, and I messed that up, let me find a good color other than black. Since this is a positively charged ion and this is a negatively charged ion, positives and negatives are going to go ahead and attract each other into that ionic bond which we see right there. So again, an ionic bond is basically two or more ions that attract each other because they have opposite attractions. And that's basically it. That's the concept behind an ionic bond. And there is another type of bond, but we're going to be talking about that later on. So a cool thing to take note of, and I know I'm you know, recording this on my screen, so I can't show you with my camera or anything. But if you take a chunk of sodium, which looks like a little piece of metal basically and you put it in a jar of chlorine gas and now chlorine gas is like kind of uh, green and yellow colored if you put them together then it's gonna start glowing and stuff is gonna start reacting and you're gonna end up 
with the element, let me change my color again, N A C L. And this element is called sodium chloride, and this is actually table salt. That's something you can eat because chlorine gas is actually, it'll kill you if you breathe it. And uh, sodium, straight sodium, isn't that great for you either. But if you combine them, it just makes table salt, which is actually pretty cool. So, anyways, that's the basics behind ionic bonds. Uh, lots of salts actually are made using this way, and um, that's enough with ionic bonds. We're ready to move on to another type of bonding, which we're going to be covering either in the next tutorial or the one after that. So, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.